Yo, listen up, here's the story. I played three more indie card games and I'm gonna talk about their mechanics and what I think about them after a first impression. As usual, if you liked any of the games, their info is in the description. Why not seven this time? Because I don't wanna procrastinate this video for half a year. So let's just get into it with our first game, Flawed. Flawed is your back and forth dark fantasy creature battler where players will play resources and then use them for units and spells and stuff and then use their units to attack the other players' units and their shrine until it's HP goes to zero when kaboom! In this game, there's four types of cards. Units, structures, events, and items. First, you got the units. You know, the battley boys. They got effects and they got some numbers. They got health, power, and speed. The first two are pretty obvious, but speed determines what units act before other units. Like if a two-speed unit attacks a three-speed unit, the three-speed unit deals damage first because it's faster. Structures are kind of like units, but they usually don't attack. Your shrine is a structure and if it dies, you lose. Events are your spell type cards. They can have the same stats as units, but they don't attack. You just do what they say and then put them in the dead zone right next to Garlic Jr. Hopefully he doesn't escape again. Sometimes they can be continuous and stay on the board. Finally, there's item cards. You play them on units and give them extra stats, but every unit can only have one item card attached to it. Yeah. Now it's kind of weird that all these non-unit card types still have unity stats. Why not just put them in the text box, right? Well, that's where the main unique mechanic from this game comes from. Every card is actually two cards in this game. There's the regular cardboard card as the base, and then a clear card that goes on top of it. These are essence cards, and they can change stats or add stats to the cardboard cards. They also determine what resource color is produced from that card. That's definitely a new one. There's also some deck building mechanics around them, but I really don't have time to get into that, so wah. Let's go over what a turn looks like. In Flawed, both players start a new turn at the same time. They both draw a card and then alternate taking actions until both players pass on doing any more. The player with the most speed on the board gets to take the first action. What actions can you take? A bunch. You can play a resource. Any card from your hand upside down. You can only do this once per turn. The cost of the cards, by the way, is in the upper right hand corner. I didn't mention that earlier. I'm not sure I need to mention it, but I did. You can play a card. Turn them resources sideways and put that card on the board. You can activate an ability. Cards with zero speed can only activate their abilities here. Abilities or cards with one or more speed are basically instants and you can use them whenever a stack is created. You can attack with a unit, declare that you're attacking, then your opponent can respond. Then you select your attacker and crank them sideways. You can attack any structures or exhausted units. Your opponent can then block your attack with any ready unit by exhausting it. Then there's more instants. In this game, instants are also pretty unique. The speed factor comes into play here. You can only respond to a card with a card that has higher speed, so you can't just counter anything. After that, units do damage to each other in the order of their speed. Speedy boys can get out unscathed sometimes. You can't counter attack if you're dead. Oh yeah, and damage is persistent in this game, so uh, <clears throat> You're gonna need to find a way to track that. You can also pass an action, just waiting for the right moment to strike. If everyone passes consecutively though, the turn ends. There's a final action you can take, which is to prepare. You draw a card and say, go off king, I am done. And then you pass for the rest of the turn. Only one player can prepare per turn though, so you could possibly give up a few actions for that juicy card advantage. The game also has a really interesting mulligan slash who goes first mechanic. You have an extra keep card that you put in your hand after you draw your initial six cards. You can mulligan any number of cards you want by putting the keep card somewhere in your hand and then putting your hand face down on the table. When everyone has done this, you reveal cards from the hand until you hit the keep card. Whoever has more speed in the revealed cards gets to take the first action on the first turn. Then you draw back up to six cards, and then you shuffle the revealed cards back in your deck. I can't say I've heard that one before either. And that's pretty much the game. Time to give my unsolicited opinion on it. It's your usual creature battling game, but with alternating individual actions and persistent health units and an interesting card combining system. The mulligan system is pretty intriguing, as is the dual card bit. I'm really interested to see if deck building will end up being overwhelming or more of a, well, there's so many options, I guess I can make whatever I want kind of vibe. This also makes for a weird situation where you can look at a card and not really know what it does. Like, ah yes, this is the Earth's Elite. 
Now, which of the 500 variations of this card is it? Shoot, it's gonna be a lot of asking, uh, wh what's this guy do again? Overall, I thought Flawed was not mind-blowing, but it seemed to be executing very well. It just wrapped up its Kickstarter a, a while back. Wow, I'm terrible at getting these out on time for those. It's gonna be interesting to see how this does with Star Wars Unlimited around the corner, which has the same alternating action style gameplay loop and persistent health. When the Dauntless gets monster huntered. We'll just have to wait and see, as Flawed's Kickstarter is supposed to deliver in February of next year. Until then, you can get the demo decks in the physical realm and on TTS, but you can access the whole set of TTS if you're on their Patreon. On to the next one, needs more giant bugs. Legions of Will is another creature battler game where the goal is to attack and destroy all three of your opponent's base cards. You do this by playing psh, units and actions and maybe upgrading your base with upgrades or laying a devastating trap card under another of your bases. And those are the five types of cards. Bases are the thing you need to live. They have defense for how much attack is needed to destroy this base, Capacity, for how many cards of other types you can have at this location, and resource, which is how many resources this bakes- ba this bakes? It bakes resources?! How many resources this base makes at the start of your turn. They can also have effects. Everything can have effects. I'm not gonna repeat it. Units have a resource cost, power, and will, which I will get back to later when the time is right and I can make the most of a recurring joke. Upgrades go on bases and make them betterer. Actions are the spells. They cost things to play, and they do things. Every action in this game is at instant speed, and they can be played at basically any time. Traps all cost the same amount of resources to put face down under a base. They have another cost that you can pay whenever a base is targeted, attacked, or destroyed. And if you do, you flip it face up, and you get the effect. Now let's look at the setup and phases. You got a 40 card deck with three different base cards. You can have four copies of any card in your deck, except legendaries, which you can only have one copy of, and upgrades. Those are one-ups too. Decide who goes first by flipping a coin, rolling a dice, or performing Mortal Kombat. The player that goes first flips one of their bases. They all start face down, followed by the other player. Then, both players draw their opening hand of two cards. Wait, no, that can't be right. There's no way. Oh, I guess it is. If you don't like your hand, you can shuffle any number of them back into your deck and redraw. If you still don't like your hand, you can do it a second time. After that, the game repeats the following phases until all three bases of a player are flipped face down. Begin phase. Turn all the sideways cards upwards and then gain resources equal to all your face up bases resource production stat. Resources carry over between turns and you can have a maximum of 20. Draw phase. Draw zero cards from your deck. Th I made it up. There isn't one in this game. Got ya. Main phase. Play the cards. Upgrades. Units. Traps. You name it. Whenever you play a card, you draw a card. Always. Some cards have redeem on them, which means you can pay the cost, throw that card in the garbage, and then draw a card if you have less than two cards in your hand. You can also flip your other bases face up if you pay the resource number on the back of the base. You can move units from one base to another, but you can't go over a base's capacity limit of things that can be on it. When you've had your fill of playing, you can go to fighting in the battle phase. You can't do this on the first turn of the game, otherwise declare all units that are attacking in what base each one is targeting. There's no summoning sickness in this game so things can attack the turn you play them and after that you need to start the rolling for an attack to successfully attack each unit needs to roll a d12 and the result has to be equal to or higher than their will otherwise the attacking unit has a weak will and nothing happens no nah, i ain't attacking all of your actually attacking units then become rested and your opponent has a chance to block with any of their units Units can only block for a base that they're currently at, though. Multiple units can also block one attacking unit. Once all the blockers have been declared, all units deal damage equal to their power to any bases or defenders or attackers. If a unit takes more damage than it has power, it's destroyed. If a base takes more damage than it has defense, it flips face down and anything at that base is destroyed. After that, it's back to the main phase where you can continue to play more stuff. Once you're done, you have to discard down to the max hand size, which is two. And that's the game. Oh man, oh god, oh man. If there's anything I can say, it sure is unique.
the hand size, the dice rolling. If you ever wanted a random chaos card game, this one and Rise are gonna have to fight it out for the crown. I just, I'm not sure what to say. Sometimes you have a plan, but then you don't have enough gym badges and your guys just don't attack, and sometimes your bases are full and you can't play anything, so you can't draw anything either. At least in my few games of experience. Every decision in this game seems like it was made by an insane person that was like, let me take everything that card game players don't like and put it all into one game. With the tiny hand size, it also seems like decks need to be super tuned in order to perform well, but maybe that's what you're into. If you want to dip into the box of forbidden and outlawed TCG mechanics, this one might be worth a play. Legions of Will has released two sets so far and they're about to release their first mini set in October, which you can get on the internet, or you can play the whole game on TTS. Now let me roll and see if my will is high enough to finish game three, that's terrible. For my last pick, I chose a bit of a smaller project. Well, all these are small, but this one is very small. Monstrider is a Yu-Gi-Oh inspired creature battler where the sun, robots, dinos, and uh, whatever this is, all fight it out until the spirit points go from 25 to zero. In Monstrider, you only got two types of cards. Units and staging cards. I swear I picked these games randomly, but they all call their dudes units. Units are the guys that hit your enemies. They got a level, attack, health, and effects. Staging cards are split into strategic and tactical types. Strategic are the spell type cards, one and dones, equips, continuous, field cards, you know the drill. Tactical cards are the trap cards that go face down and you can activate them on any turn following. Even your opponent's turn had to get that one in there somewhere. Now I just need to switch to Age of Mythology music and that looks like my video checklist is filled out. Now these card types aren't exactly exciting, it's pretty standard stuff, but the board is a little bit different. So let's get to the setup and game phases. You got a 50 card deck called a barracks where you can have three copies of any card. Then you also have... Oh, no wait, that's it. Do the coin or die thing to decide who goes first and then draw five big ones. But not that big. If you don't like your hand, you can reshuffle it into the deck and then draw one less card. And then the phases go as follows. Draw phase, draw one, not two, not negative seven, not point 35, just one. Except if it's the first turn of the game, then you draw none. Mobilization phase. This is the play stuff phase. You can deploy one unit per turn. Level one to three units can be deployed for no cost, but four and five costs need a tribute. Level fours need one tribute, and level fives need either one level four or five unit as a tribute, or two level one to three units as a tribute. It seems like tribute a single tribute for a double tribute is a recurring Yu-Gi-Oh fix I've come across. Considering how useless double tribute monsters were in Yu-Gi-Oh, it makes sense. Now, here's one of the biggest differences to other Yu-Gi-Oh inspired games. When you deploy a unit, it is fatigued for the turn and can't attack. That's right, this game has summoning sickness. You can also play and set staging cards during this phase, but you can also also move your cards around to the other lanes in a reposition. You can't activate any of the staging cards that you move for the rest of the turn though, and you can't do the attack phase if you reposition any units, but like, why are we moving cards around? Well, let's go to the attack phase. In the attack phase, any units that are not fatigued can make one attack per turn. Units can only normally attack things in the same lane as they are. There's also a defense zone in each lane, and a unit in the defense zone has to be attacked before the unit in the attack zone. Units in the defense zone can't attack though. When a unit attacks another unit, compare the attacker's attack to the defender's health. The bigger number wins, and the loser gets sent to the graveyard. If a unit dies in combat, its controller subtracts the unit's level from their spirit points. If the numbers are equal, both units die and spirit points don't change. If there's no unit at all in the attacking unit's lane, you can do a direct attack and it does damage to your opponent's spirit points equal to its level. After the attack phase, there's the preparation phase, which is just the mobilization phase part two. Do all the things that you didn't already do. And that's pretty much the game. Despite most of this game being very Yu-Gi-Oh, I think the changes that are there are pretty interesting. Summoning sickness and positioning means you need to be way more tactical on how you play things. Sure, you could put a super big butt defense booty in one lane, but there's two other lanes you have to worry about. And I'm not talking about me. 
The biggest number guys in the biggest blowout back row cards are generally limited to the lane that they're in, so they might be a big threat, but you might be able to sneak around it elsewhere on the board. I liked the positioning element without it going full ham on some grid-based system of trying to put a bunch of cards on other cards and move the cards on the cards to the other cards on the board. I also like how they kind of went the Yu-Gi-Oh route of having silly and serious cards. I think that's one of that game's biggest strengths. Variety is the spice of cardboard, like Mima always used to say. She said a lot of weird things. If you want to get Monstrider, they currently have three starter decks and their initial set on the Game Crafter, and they're currently figuring out their next step. And with that, I hope you have enjoyed this video of me jumping into a few more indie card games that are on the market or approaching the market right now. I have a bazillion more games I could cover though, so what do you want to see? Comment below so I can ignore you for a couple months and then do exactly what you said maybe. Other than that, I have a how to play or review and a gameplay video in the works, so look out for those. It's been me, Two Lanes, the Card Game Crip Man, and I'm out.